Hello, this is Michelle from Six Degrees of Kylo Ren. We've got a new episode for you where we're speculating on what we might expect to see in episode nine. Um, this is a spoilers and speculation episode, and we're going to talk about the possibility of the huts appearing in episode nine. Warning, the content in this podcast is unsubstantiated rumors. This discussion could potentially veer into spoiler territory, so if you're avoiding spoilers for nine, you might want to skip this one. We'll be covering the following topics in this podcast. Some new info that we've gotten from the Poe Dameron comics that indicate we might be seeing more of the huts in the future. We'll also be re-examining a well-known past leak that surfaced on Reddit that had the resistance asking the huts for assistance. We'll talk about why having the huts in nine potentially sets up a lot of tension for the resistance. And we'll give a recap of what we know about the particular hut that Poe has had dealings with in the comics. Finally, we'll talk about what having an alliance between the Resistance and the Huts could potentially mean for Episode 9. So, to set the stage for this episode, in earlier issues set between The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, Poe's Black Squadron of Snap Wexley, Jessica Pava, and a few others were sent on a mission by Leia to recruit more allies for the Resistance. Well, on one of these planets, Black Squadron discovered that the First Order had beaten them there, leaving the squadron stranded. So we're going to fast forward to issue 31 of the Poe Dameron comics, where we see this panel where we have Poe arguing with Leia about going back to rescue Black Squadron. A few things to note about this panel. Leia is back in her Force Awakens classy gas station outfit, as Carrie Fisher once called it. Poe is again arguing to take a large risk that the Falcon is their last ship to save a few people, and Leia doesn't want to let him have the Falcon or any more people for this mission. This is notable for a few reasons, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but the fact that Leia is back in her Force Awakens costume I think is really interesting. I think it's indicating that we're probably not going to get a huge time jump between episodes because we know that most of the archive footage that they're going to be using for Carrie for Episode 9 is going to be from The Force Awakens. So skipping ahead in the comic a little bit, we get to this next panel where Poe is leaving to go rescue members of the Black Squadron. and. He reveals the source of the ship that he's got, which is a loner from Gracchus the Hut, and Poe will need to return it at some point. You can see in this panel, Poe is saying that uh, Gracchus the Hut is the only person who will take the Resistance's phone calls right now, and it mentions that he collects ships and all kinds of stuff, and that Poe is going to have to give the ride back. This could potentially be interesting. And it, it also insinuates that Poe has apparently made a deal with one of the Huts, and that Gracchus the Hut is the only one returning the Resistance's calls at this point. That's interesting in and of itself at face value, and it speaks to the desperation of the Resistance at this point. If you dig a little deeper, that gets even more interesting, but we're going to hold that thought for now while we tie this tidbit into a possible Episode 9 leak from a few months back. So some of you might remember this leak from 4LOM from Reddit. This is where he talks about how he has word that there's going to be a scene involving the huts and crime syndicates are going to play a large role in the film and that there's going to be a scene involving Finn, Poe, and Rose where they go to visit the huts and there's this crazy feast that's similar to the crazy feast from Temple of Doom and supposedly DJ shows up and it sounds like it's, it's a pretty interesting action sequence. Now, I'm somewhat skeptical about this leak as a whole, given that in this leak, he says that Benicio del Toro as DJ is going to show up, and Benicio del Toro has not been announced as a returning cast member. And that in the comics, the hut that Poe had a history with was Gracchus the Hut, and the leak says that it's Rada the Hut, Jabba's son, who's involved in this scene. Still, as we've seen from leaks in the past, it is possible that this person saw or heard something about the resistance in the huts, and that the person filled in the blanks with their own headcanon. Um, if you remember the leaked photos that showed up in the sun a few weeks ago, it does appear that Finn, Poe, Rose, and Chewie are together for some section of the film, and that there's at least some mission involving Finn, Poe, and Chewie. If you look at the image of them on the, the grassy hill, you can clearly see Finn and Poe, and you can also see Chewie up at the top of the hill. And let's not forget that the, the bombshell that J.J. Abrams dropped on his Instagram account, where J.J. showed the picture in the cockpit that had... Poe in the pilot seat of the Falcon, Finn sitting next to him, and Rose of some, showed up somewhere in the background. Chewie's in there also when people blew up and, and looked at the picture about her. So while not confirmed, we do have this one leaker for LOM who appears to have either gotten fairly lucky with early info on Nine that he's quote unquote leaking, 
or he's at least heard a few tidbits of things. So let's keep this in mind as possible evidence that we'll see a HUD appearance in Episode 9. Uh, one last thing to bring up, there were rumors of the Huts being involved back when The Force Awakens was being shot. There was rumored concept art of Leia conversing via a hollow with a hut, and there were rumors from the previously reliable Latino review that hut puppets were being built. Now, maybe some of this hut interaction is actually included in Carrie Fisher's unreleased footage that will be repurposed for Leia and Nine. Maybe the huts were originally going to be brought into the story earlier, but then the powers that be decided to push that storyline back until later in the sequel trilogy. So let's talk about what this means that the Resistance is going to ally with the Huts. The Resistance attempting to ally with the Huts in Episode 9 is hugely significant. First of all, the Huts have a long history in Star Wars in canon as crime lords, and there's nothing indicated that they should be trusted. First, and most significantly, in the original trilogy, you've got Jabba, who Han Solo owed a debt to, and who ended up with Han frozen in carbonite when Han didn't repay that debt on time. And then in the Aftermath trilogy, you've got Nima the Hutt on Jakku, who enslaved humans by drugging them, and who was the main power on Jakku during that era until she was taken down during the Battle of Jakku. In fact, just as a little side note, Nima Outpost, where Rey had her dealings with Ankara Plutt, was actually named after Nima the Hutt. And in talking about the Resistance's ta tactics, in a recent interview with USA Today, Oscar Isaac even acknowledged that we should be questioning Poe's actions. In Episode 9, the Resistance would be in a situation where they'd be more like guerrilla fighters than an organized army. And here's the quote. You want to get people to question him, as opposed to have some sort of easy answer for like, yeah, yeah, he did the right thing. He was a hero. What's the cost of this stuff, Isaac says during an interview for his new thriller, Operation Finale? In the battle against the evil First Order, Isaac thinks that it's easy to forget that the Resistance are guerrilla fighters, adhering closer to something like the Revolutionary War fighters, or even the guerrillas in Cuba, with Che and Fidel and all these guys living in the mountains, coming down to do some attacks and going back to, and trying to hide from the Empire of the United States. It, it's kind of ragged at this point. Anyway, it's been established in pretty much every piece of canon material that they appear in that the Huts are bad news. They are not a species to be trusted, and the Resistance is clearly running out of options if they're turning to the Huts for help. On top of that, there's one very prominent authority figure within the Resistance who I just can't see approving of an alliance with the Huts. And that is Leia Organa, who was once captured and enslaved by Jabba the Hutt, and ultimately able to strangle Jabba to his death with her own chains. This act earned Leia the affectionate nickname the Hutt Slayer in some circles in the galaxy. In fact, in Claudia Gray's Bloodline novel, there's a plot point where there's essentially a snuff film of Leia killing Jabba that's circulating around underground circles, and it's considered a valuable thing to own. We know that Leia doesn't like the Huts, and the Huts don't like that this video existed. I can't see these two factions voluntarily working together in Episode 9 without some serious issues. I'm going to read a little excerpt from Bloodline here. Hut Slayer, Rin Riven breathed in genuine reverence. This is what we call you among ourselves, and it's a far greater title than either senator or princess could ever be. The Nyctos know you for the warrior you are, Hut Slayer, and you will always have friends among us. Leia took the holocube, slipping it into the pocket of her cloak. Footage of her committing a murder, well, it was either the strangest diplomatic gift she'd ever been given or very close. If there are other records of this around? Only a handful. The Huts hunted down most of the copies and vendors. They didn't want proof of their own vulnerability to circulate. As you can see, however, I have ways of getting what I want. So, going forward in the future now, let's talk about Gracchus. So if that's Jabba and the Huts in general, do we know anything about Gracchus the Hut, the Hut that Poe borrowed the ship from? It turns out that Gracchus has made quite a few appearances in various Star Wars comic series over the last few years. And in what's possibly bad news for the Resistance, Gracchus sounds like a pretty shady guy. I'm going to give a quick summary of the plot lines that Gracchus has been involved in in the canon comics. The first one involves capturing Luke Skywalker. And I've got a quote here from Gracchus saying, It appears you will make a fine addition to my collection after all, but I'm not. What you are, dear boy, is the last Jedi, and now you belong to me. Okay, first off, in a comic that came out back in 2015, at some point shortly after A New Hope in the Star Wars timeline and well before The Empire Strikes Back, Luke Skywalker found himself captured by Gracchus the Hutt, who wants to add Luke to his personal collection of Jedi artifacts. He ends up forcing Luke to fight in an arena duel, billing Luke as the last Jedi. 
The duel itself ends up being cut short when Imperial forces attack the arena, and ultimately they end up taking Gracchus into custody. And Gracchus is then kept in a prison city for approximately 30 years. During his time in the prison city, Gracchus, of course, manages to reform his own crime syndicate, and he rises to power within the prison. If you fast forward to the time leading up to The Force Awakens, in the next series of comics, Poe and his Black Squadron break into the prison city in hopes of bartering with Gracchus, who apparently had some knowledge about Lor Santeca's whereabouts. There's also a First Order officer at the same time that Gracchus had a friendly history with, who was also staying in Gracchus's compound. And Gracchus ends up playing Poe and the First Order off of each other, making it clear that he'll give Lor Santeca's information to whoever can break Gracchus out of prison. Now, Poe ends up being the one to break Gracchus out of prison in this comic, and when Gracchus tries to renege on the deal, Poe strong arms Gracchus into giving up the Lor Santeca data in exchange for the hyperspace coordinates that Gracchus needs to actually get away from the prison planet. The next time that Gracchus appears in the comics, it's in Poe's aside that's mentioned earlier in the podcast of how Gracchus was the only one returning the Resistance's calls, and who apparently also loaned Poe a ship to rescue the stranded survivors of Black Squadron. So what does this all mean for Episode 9? I, I'm going to just be honest here. I would love to see an appearance by the Hutts in Episode 9, if for nothing else than the sake of the dramatic tension that they promise. Let's read through this summary on Gracchus's carry that came from Wikipedia. Gracchus displayed a selfish streak and was solely concerned for his own well-being and safety. He resented his long imprisonment and sought every opportunity to escape. Gracchus had a habit of breaking deals with even friends like Terex, who was the First Order officer, at his own whim. Despite breaking the deal, Gracchus believed that his old friendship with Terex would last. He underestimated Terex's vindictive and ruthless nature. Gracchus liked Terex because of his criminal streak and despised good guys like the Resistance pilot Poe Dameron and his Black Squadron. After Poe outmaneuvered Terex, Gracchus was savvy enough to accept Black Squadron's offer to help him escape. Gracchus's selfish streak manifested again when he expressed indifference to Terex's attacks on the Megalox Beta space station and shuttles. Now that's the prison planet. He was willing to have other sentient beings die if he benefited from the situation. Poe exploited Gracchus's selfish nature by withholding access to the hyperspace coordinates until he provided the necessary information on Lor Santeca. Okay, now does Gracchus sound like someone who the Resistance can trust? I know that I've seen some speculation online that it would be cool to see the Resistance funded by or otherwise allied with the Huts, But I gotta tell you, I don't think that the Huts are getting a redemption arc. First, Leia isn't going to like a deal with the Huts. The Huts have never been presented in any canon source as a species that can be trusted. Leia hates the Huts, and the Huts hate Leia. She's the Hut Slayer. They hate that she made them appear weak to the point where they used their power and influence to try to get a hold of all the copies of that Hut Slayer hollow that they could. Gracchus himself sounds like he could have a beef to pick with Poe over being strong-armed into giving up Lor Santeca's information, although he apparently did lend Poe a ship at some later date. But the fact that it's being left open-ended, with Poe still needing to return the ship, opens up the possibilities of future dealings between these two. What I'm hoping to see in Episode 9 is an appearance by the Huts that comes back to bite Poe and maybe the Resistance in the ass. If the Resistance as a whole visits Gracchus, is he just going to let Leia walk away? What about Rey, given he tried to collect The Last Jedi previously with Luke Skywalker? Now, I realize that this is probably somewhat far-fetched speculation because it all comes out of the comics, and we've seen very little from the comics and the books make it into the movies so far. But I think that the groundwork has absolutely been laid for the Resistance to be double-crossed or ambushed in their potential dealings with the Huts. I could see Gracchus laying a trap or changing his mind about helping the Resistance once he's got Leia or Rey right there. And if Leia is in danger, I would love to see that being the spark to Ben Solo finally making the right choice about something. You know that we're all big Kylo Ren Redemption fans here at Six Degrees of Kylo Ren, so we're going to tie that angle into nearly any speculation, but I, I think that this has some really good storytelling potential. Remember, Ben couldn't fire on Mommy from his TIE silencer when she was on the bridge of the Rattus, so I suspect that Mommy being endangered by the Huts isn't really going to go over very well with the current Supreme Leader. Perhaps this could be the catalyst for our boy to finally do something selfless and to save his mother. You know that Ben had to have hated the fact that his mother had been enslaved and treated like a trophy by the Huts in the past. He's not going to let that happen again. And if it's not Leia who's in danger, although my money would be that it's on Leia, there's something important in her arc for Disney to bust out the archival footage. 
when they had previously said that they wouldn't initially after Carrie Fisher's death. But if not Leo, what about a certain scavenger whose life Ben had actually saved in the past? Since he couldn't have Luke 30 years ago, who's to say that Gracchus the Hutt wouldn't have his sights set on collecting the current Last Jedi, who happens to be Rey? I'd also think that if she fell into the Hutt's hands, the situation wouldn't sit well with Ben, even if he and she are currently on a break after she closed the door on him on Crate. And if Ben comes to anyone's rescue against the Hutts, it's going to be a selfless act on his part and essentially make him a traitor, or even more of a traitor, to the First Order. Whereas saving Rey and the Last Jedi opened up the opportunity for him to seize power and become Renperor, if he saves Rey or Leia in Episode 9, he's likely going to have to surrender that power in order for the woman or women that he loves to live. So in conclusion, that's about it for this episode of Six Degrees of Kylo Ren. Based on the circumstantial evidence, I think there's a good chance that we could be seeing the Huts play some function in Episode 9, and my guess is that if we do see them, it's going to be in a pivotal role in some way. The Huts aren't suddenly going to become the good guys, and they're not getting a redemption arc. At best, they'll be helping the Resistance for their own gain in some way. At worst, and this provides more dramatic potential, they're going to end up endangering Leia, Rey, or the Resistance as a whole. And if that happens, I can hardly think of a better way to get the audience cheering for Ben Solo's redemption than for him to swoop in and save the day.